It's no secret that many artists and creatives um, at times struggle with this phenomenon called artist block. And it's a real thing. And you know, basically what artist block is, is those seasons and those moments when you really don't have any inspiration. You don't have anything that's inspiring you to create. You know, you just feel not, you, you well, sometimes you feel kind of stuck, but you also feel a little lost because while you have many things that you may be passionate about, that you may have an interest in, none of it in that moment or in that season is inspiring you to create. Well, in this chat, I want to give you some secrets to finding creative inspiration and to creating your best work. Hi, my name is Maisha, AKA Creatively Yours Maisha, and I'm a visual artist and design professional with over 17 plus years in the creative arts industry, not only as a former gallery owner, but also as a teacher and mentor to artists, both professionals and students. My mission is to help artists reach their highest creative potential and to soar to their highest heights. Okay, so let's jump right into it. The first way to find creative inspiration is to embrace solitude. Now, I know that as artists and creatives, we are adept at spending time alone and to get the work done. But I want to put an emphasis here on mindfulness and meditation and journaling and doing specific things in those times of solitude where you can unpack your thoughts and ideas in a meaningful and very intentional way so that you can connect with the deepest parts of your spirit in order to receive those fresh creative ideas. And this is so powerful because a lot of times, you know, we can be alone, but we're still stimulated by outside thoughts and happenings and things that are going on around us. I remember when COVID first hit, all of a sudden, artists and creatives had this coveted time, this time, 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 time that they always needed to create, but nobody had inspiration. Nobody felt moved or, you know, to really actually create. And when I really started looking under it, I said, you know, the problem is that some of the problem, you know, not all of it, this is not, you know, inclusive of everyone, but that although now you had time to create, you hadn't spent intentional time alone, really unpacking your thoughts and not letting outside influences enter into what you were trying to um, create and express in the moment. So while the pandemic created time and space, everybody still had all of these outside influences, oh, what's going to happen in the world, you know, all of these things were still going on, going on in our minds and hearts, and rightfully so, right? But if you are able to quiet, really quiet your mind and really hear your inner spirit deep down, that's where you can get those little, little golden nuggets and you, nuggets and you can pull them out and begin to express them in your work. Um, one more thing I want to say on that note, and you know, that's this, this, uh, notion of kind of, um, solitude and being away from everybody and, you know, intro being an introvert. And I know that not every artist is an introvert, but it is a trait of many artists to be kind of introverted when they're creating kind of set apart. And I want to tell you, listen, embrace that, you know, don't let anybody guilt you into to feeling that you always have to be a part of the crowd, it's not true. You know, you can, you will create some of your best work in solitude. Actually, you you will create your best work in solitude because you need to be hearing from your deepest part of your spirit. Um, there is a book I'm reading. Well, I've, I read it many, many years ago, but I always go back to it because it explains so much what artists and what a lot of introverts go, go through. And it's called Quiet. The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. And she goes on to talk about how uh, Steve Wozniak, I hope I'm saying his name right, one of the co-founders of Apple, um, he, we would have never really had the personal computer if he hadn't spent 
hours upon hours, maybe even years just in solitude, you know, working on this thing. And that's where he thrived. He really thrived in in solitude and aloneness, being able to make mistakes, unpack it, you know, reflect upon it, and then being intentional about his reflections and how he brought that to his work. So I just want to mention that if you are an introvert or you spend a significant amount of time alone and sometimes you feel guilt or shame around it or other people may make you feel that way, your family maybe, check that book out and it'll help you to kind of kind of quiet that down and really accept that aspect about yourself. And it's very important that you do because as creators, you need that time and space alone a lot. <laughs> so that's, that's the first way. Um, to finding creative inspiration. Okay, so the next secret to finding creative inspiration may seem like it is in direct contradiction <laughs> to the first way, but it's really not, right? And again, everything is about doing it with intention. So the next way is to collaborate, uh, talk with people, share ideas. Um, and I'm, you know, this is, it might sound like a contradiction, but I'm really saying get out there, right? Be, you know, immerse yourself in other cultures and, you know, people who have different perspectives that you may have. And I know that this may be a struggle for some artists. I get it, right? Even me, I used to struggle with small talk. Um, and and it, it was something I had to just kind of teach myself and really just kind of place the emphasis on love. And it wasn't really about the the small talk. It's about what can I learn about this person? What can I share with this person, right? And approaching small talk from that perspective. Um, and if you struggle with it, just practice a little bit. Um, but if you, like me, if you um, thrive on deep and meaningful conversations, then, you know, curate your collaboration and your your uh, your study of art and culture where you you make time to spend one-on-one -on -one time with people, getting to know them on a deeper level or actually curating small groups of people where it's specifically like, we're not turning up. No, we just sitting and chilling and drinking wine so that we can really um, dive deep into different ideas and you know explore the inner realms of each other. And to piggyback on that example I gave about uh, Steve Wozniak in the first example, whereas he spent hours upon hours and like I, like I said, maybe even years alone, he did have these little breaks, right? Where he would visit um, the water cooler. I think it was when he was working at Hewlett Packard, right? He would spend time like hours and hours alone in his cubicle. But then every now and again, he would meet up with his coworkers in like the communal spaces and just chat about what they were doing, right? So putting himself around other people who had the same interests, but also every now and again, breaking away from his work and making that time. So again, it doesn't have to be about the small talk, you know, if, if that's not what you really like or thrive on, it can, you can, it can be personal, deeper, higher level conversations. And I, I will not, I cannot say enough about how that will really give you, you know, deep, deeper levels of inspiration because you will begin to see things, places, people, happenings in the world in ways that you could have never, if you only stayed in your community, on your block, in your city, in your state, and even in your country. Listen, if you hear nothing else from me today, the number one thing that you must do is travel. And specifically, I would say travel outside of your country, travel outside of your culture, travel to places where people don't do things nowhere near the way you do things at home. It will completely change your perspective. It will completely change how you approach your creative work. And in those seasons, when you're meeting new people, you know, new ways of doing things, I promise you, you will begin to have a wellspring of creative inspiration. Okay, the last way that I'm going to give you today to finding creative inspiration, and I know this is the one that most artists, most creatives don't want to hear. I have been a creative since I was a child, and it was the one thing I never wanted my mama to hear, which I never wanted to hear my mama say, when, especially when I didn't feel like it, which was practice. 
the bottom line is you just got to work. You know, you will find inspiration when you start doing the work, especially in times when you just don't feel like it. That's when you pick up the pen or the brush or whatever your your thing is and you just start doing, you just start flowing from that unknown place. And I can testify, I don't know how many times I have started working or just started splashing around paint on the canvas, not really into it, not really feeling it in the moment, but I look up and three, four hours have gone by. Why? Because one step leads to the next, to the next, and things begin to unfold in front of your eyes that inspires you to take the next step, to make the next mark, to make the next move. Now, granted, sometimes when you don't, when you just don't feel like it, it might come out a mess. It might. But in that mess, you can find the mistakes. You can find something will unfold for you, right? You will discover that, yeah, pink and orange don't look good next to each other, right? That's not what you set out to do. And that will inspire you to then create maybe a painting with pink and blue or pink and yellow, something that will spark the next thing. Because maybe you like the way it it blended kind of, sort of, and it felt, you felt something, but it didn't feel whole. And so you do it again. And this is a huge one because this is also how you, how you grow. And you inspire yourself really when you begin to grow and unfold different things along your journey. So I know this is the one, especially when you are not, you know, you just feel blocked up, locked up. It's like, why am I going to, you know, especially if you're a writer and you have writer's block, it's like, why am I going to just sit in front of the keyboard and nothing? Even if you begin to write once upon a time, there was a girl and then flow from that, right? Because then, especially when you don't feel like it, you allow your brain to just click off and you allow your spirit to begin speaking through you. So that is the biggest way. It probably should have been the first thing I talked about, but solitude was really important. But it is one of the biggest things where you will find a wellspring of inspiration is when you just work, get in the flow, jump in the ocean, do your thing. All right. So I hope this little chat resonated with you. If it did, Give this video a like, a share so that other people can find it and discover it. Other creatives that you know, I will be so happy and grateful to you. And if you would like to work with me, I'm going to uh, drop some information in the uh, description below so that you can understand how to contact me and work with me. Also, one last thing. Tell me your secret. What are your secrets to finding creative inspiration? Like some of the other things that I didn't say, like walking in nature, nature is huge to finding inspiration because that's where you find the rhythm of life, right? And I could go on and on and on and deep, deep, deep into that one. But I want to hear from you. What are some things that you do to find creative inspiration? All right, my loves, that's it for today. I hope that this, again, I hope this message resonated with you and I will check y'all on the next chat. Peace.